Hello everybody. We are reading in Deuteronomy and we are in chapter 11. I'm reading out of the NLT, so grab your Bibles if you want to follow along. Otherwise, just feel free to listen. We're reading out of the Word of God, Deuteronomy chapter 11, and I'm very blessed to have you here. You must love the Lord your God and always obey His requirements, decrees, regulations, and commands. Keep in mind that I am not talking now to your children who have never experienced the discipline of the Lord your God or seen His greatness and His strong hand and powerful arm. They didn't see the miraculous signs and wonders He performed in Egypt against Pharaoh and all His land. They didn't see what the Lord did to the armies of Egypt and to their horses and chariots, how He drowned them in the Red Sea as they were chasing you. He destroyed them, and they have not recovered to this very day. Your children didn't see how the Lord carried for you, cared for you in the wilderness until you arrived here. They didn't see what he did to Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eliab, a descendant of Reuben. When the earth opened its mouth in the Israelite camp and swallowed them along with their households and tents and every living thing that belonged to them. But you have seen the Lord perform all these mighty deeds with your own very eyes. The blessings of obedience, chapter 11 still. Therefore, be careful to obey every command I am giving you today, so you may have strength to go in and take over the land you are about to enter. If you obey, you will enjoy a long life in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors and to you, their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land you are about to enter and take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you came, where you planted your seed and made irrigation ditches with your foot as the vegetable garden, as in a vegetable garden. Rather, the land will soon you will soon take over is a land of hills and valleys with plenty of rain, a land that the Lord your God cares for. He watches over it through each season of the year. Amen. If you carefully obey the commands I am giving you today, and if you love the Lord your God and serve Him with all your heart and soul, then He will send the rains in their proper seasons, the early and late rains, so you can bring in your harvest of grain, new wine, and olive oil. He will give you lush pasture land for your livestock, and you yourselves will have all you want to eat. But be careful, don't let your heart be deceived so that you turn away from the Lord and serve and worship other gods. If you do, the Lord's anger will burn against you. He will shut up the sky and hold back the rain. And the ground will fail to produce its harvests. Then you will quickly die in that good land the Lord is giving you. So commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Be careful to obey all these commands I am giving you. Show love to the Lord your God by walking in His ways and holding tightly to Him. Then the Lord will drive out all the nations ahead of you, though they are much greater and stronger than you, and you will take over their land. Wherever you set foot, that land will be yours. Your frontiers will stretch from the wilderness in the south to Lebanon in the north, and from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you, for the Lord your God will cause the people to fear and dread you, as he promised wherever you go in the whole land. Look, today I am giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse. You will be blessed if you obey the command of the Lord that I am giving you today, but you will be cursed if you reject the commands of the Lord your God and turn away from Him and worship gods that you have not known before. When the Lord your God brings you into the land that helps and helps you take possession of it, you must pronounce the blessings at Mount Gerizim 
and the curse at Mount Ebal. These two mountains are west of the Jordan River in the land of the Canaanites who live in the Jordan Valley near the town of Gilgal, not far from the Oaks of Morah. I think it might be Moray. For you are about to cross the Jordan River to take out the land and take over the land the Lord our God is giving you. When you take that land and are living in it, you must be careful to obey all the decrees and regulations I am giving you today. I feel like that was a very interesting chapter. I think it's totally beautiful. And it shows how God is in control. How all the Israelite people have to do is turn to him, trust him, commit their heart and soul to him, and walk in faithfulness. And... I think the God is so much more powerful than we could ever think or imagine. I think that God is absolutely all powerful, all present, all knowing. He knows our hearts. He knows our hearts. He's capable of commanding the winds and the rains and the seas and everything. God is in total control. All we have to do is trust him. And when our hearts are turned from him, he knows that. And no matter what you're facing today, no matter what you're facing, no matter how much damage you've done in your life, you can't take back time, you can't go back in time, but you can turn your heart to God now. Trust Him. Commit your ways to Him. Walk in faithfulness. That's the best way to live a good life. And if you haven't done that yet, I beg you to do so now because God is in control. Turn your heart to Him. And even I... I promise you, I was not walking in faithfulness. And I still am working on that. But God is so good and patient. Anyways, chapter 12 of Deuteronomy. And, I'm so sorry, side note. I've had a really long work day, so if I'm struggling to read, I've been sitting in front of a computer half the day, treating patients the other half. But I am so grateful now to be in the Word of God. I'm so glad to be home with you and in the Word of God. Chapter 12. These are the decrees and regulations you must be careful to obey when you live in the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must obey them as long as you live. When you drive out the nations that live there, you must destroy all the places where they worship their gods, high on the mountains, up on the hills, and under every green tree. Break down the altars and smash their sacred pillars. Burn their Asherah poles and cut down their carved idols. Completely erase the names of their gods. Do not worship the Lord your God in the way these pagan people worship their gods. Rather, you must seek the Lord your God at the place of worship he himself will choose. He can speak to us. He can tell us what he wants. He can do it. From among all the tribes, the place where his name will be honored, there you will bring your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, your sacred offerings, your offerings to fulfill a vow, your voluntary offerings, and your offering of the firstborn animals of the herd and flocks. There you and your families will feast in the presence of the Lord your God, and you will rejoice in all you've accomplished because the Lord your God has blessed you. Yes, your pattern of worship will change. Today, all of you are doing as you please. Mm. Because you have not yet arrived at the place of rest, the land the Lord your God is giving you as your special possession. But you will soon cross the Jordan River and live in the land the Lord your God is giving you. When he gives you rest from all your enemies and you're living safely in the land... You must bring everything I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, your sacred offerings, and your offerings to fulfill a vow to the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored. Yes, everywhere. You must celebrate there in the presence of the Lord your God with your sons and daughters and all your servants. And remember to include the Levites who live in your towns. For they will receive no allotment of land among you. <clears throat> Be careful not to sacrifice your burnt offerings just anywhere you like. You may do so only at the place the Lord will choose within one of your tribal territories. There you must offer your burnt offerings and do everything I command you. But you may butcher your animals and eat their meat in any town wherever you want. You must freely, you may freely eat the animals with which the Lord your God blesses you. All of you, whether ceremonially clean or unclean, may eat the meat, just as you now eat gazelle and deer. But you must not consume the blood. 
you must pour it on the ground like water, but you may not eat your offerings in your hometown, neither the tithe or the grain and new wine and olive oil, nor the firstborn of your flocks and herds, nor any offering to fulfill a vow, nor your voluntary offerings, nor your sacred offerings. You must eat these in the presence of the Lord your God at the place he will choose. That seems easy enough, right? Eat them there with your children, your servants, and the Levites who live in your towns, celebrating the presence of the Lord your God in all you do. And be very careful never to neglect the Levites as long as you live in your land. When the Lord your God expands your territory as he has promised, and you have the urge to eat meat, you may freely eat meat whenever you want. It might happen that the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored, is a long way from your home. If so, you may butcher any of the cattle, sheep, or goats the Lord has given you, and you may freely eat the meat in your hometown, as I have commanded. Anyone, whether ceremonially clean or unclean, may eat the meat just as you do now with gazelle and deer, but never consume the blood. For the blood is the life, and you must not consume the life blood with the meat. Instead, pour out the blood on the ground like water. Do not consume the blood so that all may go well with you and your children after you, because you will be doing what pleases the Lord. Take your sacred gifts and your offerings given to fulfill a vow to the place the Lord chooses. You must offer the meat and blood of your burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord your God. The blood of your other sacrifices must be poured out on the altar of the Lord your God, but you may eat the meat. Be careful to obey all my commands so that all will go well with you and your children after you because you will be doing what is good and pleasing to the Lord your God. When the Lord your God goes ahead of you and destroys the nations and you drive them out and live in their land, do not fall into the trap of following their customs and worshiping their gods. Do not fall into their customs and worship their gods. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, How do these nations worship their gods? I'm glad that it says that. Do not inquire about their gods. How do these nations worship their gods? I want to follow their example. You must not worship the Lord your God the way other nations worship their gods, for they perform for their gods every detestable act that the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters as sacrifices to their gods. Terrible. So be careful to obey all the commands I give you. You must not add anything to them or subtract anything from them. And that's all that we're going to be reading. Next is Deuteronomy chapter 13. I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm on the edge of my seat. When God gives you instructions, he's not doing that just to be a pain or to be difficult. When you love someone, when you love God, you want to do what pleases him. You want to do things that make him happy. When you love someone, you want to make them happy. And it says in the word that when you love God, his commandments are easy for you. God knows what's best for us. And all he asks is actually very, very easy. And if everybody was doing it, and if we were all encouraging each other to walk in the ways of the Lord, it would be so much easier. When even today at work, we were discussing something because what our boss expected of us was not realistic. And we were discussing, how are we going to do this? Because this is not realistic. And I said, I am not going to be unethical in this situation. And I looked at the phone number for HR in the event. Not that I'm going to, but I am going to stand for honesty. And we have to encourage each other because the world is so full of sin and rebellion and dishonesty and corruption. And that's what we're taught. We need to start encouraging each other to live wholeheartedly for the Lord, to make it fun to enjoy it if people keep saying that being obedient to god is boring that's what other people are going to believe we are a light to the world we are supposed to be the light to the world we are supposed to be an example to others and even though this was for another time that we are under a new covenant god still wants us to show that we love him by honoring him with our heart and when you honor the lord with your heart it will go well with you but put God first and not your selfishness. And I too have a very long way to go. But honor the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and it will go well with you.
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I really mean that. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13 is next.